Valentine's is a huge Q1 niche on Etsy. So I'm going to go to Valentine's Day or type in Valentine's Day shirt. And it's important to keep in mind that anything that populates down here, the reason why it's populating there is because a lot of people are searching for it. So it can give you lots of different niche ideas. It can give you an idea of what you should put, be putting in your, maybe possibly your title and your tags. So don't ignore that. I'm going to go ahead and go for women. And now I'm just going to do a little bit of, of just some preliminary niche research. And this is just one way to do niche research. There's lots of different ways. Some people like to start, start on E-Rank, for example. All right, so I'm going to, and just to give you an idea of the d types of revenue that some stores are already starting to make on Etsy, I'm going to use my product analytics after I sort by bestseller, which is already sorted by bestseller. And just so you know how to do that, you would go to um, here and then select bestseller and then apply. And then I'm going to go to product analytics. Now I'm going to um, just sort by revenue or you could sort by total sales, whichever one you prefer. So as we can see here, um, some shops are, are revenueing anywhere from 21,000 a month. And this is an estimation all the way, you know, over a thousand dollars a month. Now it is important to note that some of these shops are um, handmade, so they're making them by hand, and others are print and demand. And it's also important to note that this revenue here is not taking out um, any of their material costs and their shipping costs. All right, so now that we have an idea of what types of revenue some stores are getting that are starting to rank well on Etsy for this niche, let's go ahead and do just some trend research here. So first I'm going to be paying attention to the types of colors of the apparel to see just kind of what people are buying right now. And I'm noticing lots of mauves and peaches here, whites. And once again, we're just looking for patterns, right? We're just looking for patterns. I'm noticing more mauves, hot pink. So this can give you one, an idea of the types of apparel colors that are popular, but it can also help maybe give you an idea of possibly any gaps in the market. So maybe a new color um, that someone that other sellers that are selling well aren't using. So mauve is once again, really popular, white. All right, so now that I have an idea of the color, types of color, creams sell really well in Etsy too. Once again, more pinks, light pink, pink. Uh, sports gray. All right, so now that I have that idea, now I'm going to kind of keep an eye on the types of apparel. I'm noticing Gildan 1800 sweatshirts and Bella Canvas 3001 shirts. And Comfort Colors, that's a, certainly a very popular um, brand of shirt on Etsy sort of more like that, um, either the Gildan 5000, or it could be Comfort Colors, Bella Camus 3001. This is the Gildan 1800 sweatshirt. All right, so now we know what types of apparel um, are selling and, and that's really popular right now. Now I'm going to pay attention to the designs, okay? To the design trends to see if we can um, apply these trends to a new design. All right, so I'm noticing this sort of um, handwritten font here. Now it is important to note that these here are ads, so they're paying to be here, so they're not quite as relevant as the ones that are actually ranking here at the top. But sometimes it does um, correlate, such as in this example here, where um, the ad is close to the top, to the, to, you know, being the top of the ranked page. All right, but as you can see here, you know, that's not necessarily the case. All right, now we can notice other uh, design trends. Coffee and Valentine's Day. So coffee and is a great cross niche for just about any holiday, almost any profession. Um, it's just a really great niche. Let's see, and then of course the four by four collage with the doodle hearts, watercolor hearts that are uh, made to look like candy suckers, coffee, retro coffee, the uh, retro font with uh, the stacked sort of shadow there, 
and then the retro design leopard print um, with plaid and stripes sort of the retro heart here or the retro heart eyes of the smiley face um, I don't personally do anything with the smiley faces just because I know that smiley faces are trademarked um, I think that I, I really like the checkerboard here um, that's been really trendy that was trendy for other um, holidays recently too including Halloween and then once again for Christmas retro here once again love the word love leopard print doodle hearts coffee and valentines so i really like the idea of doing the coffee and valentines cross niche and i think that i do want to do that with the checkerboard and i'm not noticing that with the coffee I want to do um, another, yeah, they don't have any kind of checkerboard there. I think I really like the idea. And then I want to do a new pun, though, a new coffee pun. So what I would typically do is just kind of Google funny coffee puns and then come up with new ones. And I've already done that, and I already know one that I like. So now I'm going to start looking for designs that I can use in the original design that I want to create. Because I personally like to, um, even if I get pre-made designs, I like to edit them and change them so that um, they're just more unique and they're they're more likely to stand out in Etsy than if you make than, than if you use pre-made designs. All right, so um, I've already pulled this one up on Creative Fabrica. Creative Fabrica is an amazing um, design website. They It's all commercial use too, so I don't have to worry about whether or not I can use it. Now, it is important to note that not all of them are print and demand licensing. So that's the case with this design. And just so you know what I did is I just searched for retro coffee valentines. And lots of different ones can pop up here like this one. Um, here's the one that I liked. And I also like this one. It is by, let me see who the seller is. Flora Co. Studio. So I would download that. And I already have this downloaded to my computer. Oh, and by the way, I have a link, referral link for Creative Fabrica um, in the description of this video. Um, it is a $1 trial. Um, it is a referral link, so if you click on that, it helps support the channel and also helps provide you with a trial. Now I have the design uploaded into Canva. This is a 4500 by 5400 Canva size. It just makes a really great rectangle shape um, for apparel. So now, in order to access any kind of eraser tool in Canva, I actually have to remove the background from the graphic. So let's go to um, select the graphic and then edit image and then background remover. You do need to have a Canva Pro account in order to access this tool. So I do have a, um, a referral link in my description box um, for a 30 day free trial for Canva Pro. All right, so now I can access this eraser tool. I can also change the brush size so that it's a little bit larger just to make the erasing process a little bit faster. I'm going to go ahead and remove any of the elements I don't want, like so. And then I won't forget the bottom part here. And if you accidentally erased any part that you wanted to keep, you just uh, use the restore um, button up here to basically do the same thing. And then it will, will bring back any part of the image that um, was accidentally erased. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and say done. And I want to add some text to this now. All right, so. I'm going to put this and go to add heading and I'm going to make this say I love you and then I want to make this font the a retro font I have uploaded a retro font that I really like from it's called a piece of love font from Creative Fabrica and then I'm going to make this all caps and then I want to change the spacing around a little bit. And then I'm going to move this up here. And then you can um, kind of mess around with the sizing as much as you'd like. And then 
actually change it back to here. I'm going to go ahead and duplicate that. I love you, Mocha. So Mocha. I did um, look up some other um, puns on Google, some coffee puns. And I like this one. And it doesn't quite cover the feet as much as I would like. So I think what I'm going to actually do is add some graphics here. I'm going to upload some hearts that I created earlier. Just to kind of cover the feet, just to kind of make it so you can't tell that as much that we erased the feet. Which to be honest, because um, we erased the feet, you know, you watched me do that. Um, it's more noticeable than someone who just is, is purchasing it and doesn't realize um, what it was supposed to look like. All right, I love you so, Mocha. And then to just add a little bit more dimension to the text, I'm going to actually change the color of it. And when you upload a graphic to Canva, what I really love about the about this um, website is that it auto populates the colors from the graphic. So I can pull that color there. And I'm actually going to make it just a teeny bit darker, I think. No, actually, I like that. I think I will just add, I will duplicate that and add go to effects and just hollow it out and make it black just to give it a little bit more depth there. And I forgot that I did want to add a shadow to this as well. So I'm gonna go to, to effects and then I'm going to go to echo shadow. I just feel like it gives it even more of a retro feel. And then I'll do that here as well, echo, and then duplicate. And then I'm going to go to effects. Oh, it's already there. I didn't notice. And then hollow. And then of course change it to black. And move it around if you need to. I think it's probably good there. And I'm really happy with that. Now I do want to add a checkerboard to this just because I think it would um, kind of help it to stand out a little bit more. So let's see if I might do that one. Here. And this is a checkerboard um, that I actually found on Canva. Uh, I did edit it um, previously to make it a little bit more like textured and distressed. And I'm going to show you how to add a distressed element to this design as well. Go ahead and move this backwards. I would consider making maybe making the um, cup smaller if I were to redo it. But overall, I'm pretty happy with this. So now I can save this as a PNG. And don't forget when you're saving as a PNG, which saving it as a PNG is important because then it has a transparent background. Don't forget to select transparent background and then download. And then I'm going to put this on a mock-up. I personally really like to use mock-ups that are themed towards the holiday that I'm designing for. So I can now go ahead and upload that. Oh, I did forget that I wanted to add I wanted to add a little bit more texture to the font. So if I wanted to do that, let me show you how to do that real quickly. Yeah, I'm really happy with how this turned out. That's really cute. Now, if I wanted to add some more texture, what I would do is go back to the design 
and I would just search elements for distressed and then these different types of backgrounds pop up. I would probably want to go with this one and then I would change the color to white and then voila, you have this sort of texture there. Now you do need to move it to front obviously and then you can duplicate that. And then you're ready to go. Now you would need to save this and then re-upload re -upload the file to Canva uh, and then remove the background so that you didn't have that texture behind it. I'm pretty happy with it without the texture to be honest so I'm just going to be happy with this and then I would upload this to Etsy after I published it from Printify. So I would find the product that I would want to list this on. In this case, um, the uh, product there was a t-shirt. I personally really like the Bella Camus 3001 as well as the Gildan 5000 for more of a oversized look. So you would just go to shirts or men's clothing t-shirts and then you could search the Bella Camus 3001 And then I would choose which um, pro provider you'd like to use. I really like Monster Digital. They're just uh, very competitively priced and they also um, are very fast at shipping and have really good quality printing. So now I would pull that um, design from my library. And I like to stretch it out so that it fills most of the space. And then that is ready to publish to save your product and that is ready to publish to your Etsy store. I hope you found this video very valuable and helpful. If you did, be sure to um, leave a comment below and let me know if you have any questions about either selling an Etsy or about designing for print and demand. And be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell because I will be doing more videos to help you grow and scale your Etsy shop in 2023 and beyond.